Hello everyone, Mino Haxer here. In this video, we're going to be going over two different examples as Janna. One in a lane where I know I'm very favored, in this case Janna versus Leona, and in another game where I'm not so favored in Janna versus Soraka. And I have to play the lane slightly differently between each case, so we're going to go over the decisions between how I play each lane and to how I position myself and use my spells effectively in order to give us a lead. So we first give a leash to Elise, and the first thing you want to do immediately when you get to lane is to check whether or not the enemy bot lane is given a leash. In this case, we see the Twitch and Soraka are walking to lane, which tells us a lot of things. One, it tells us they gave a leash to Kha'Zix, which means it also dictates pretty clearly what Kha'Zix is going to do. He's going to take blue, most likely take Gromp or Wolves, and then most likely head topside. And if he does end up taking Skittle topside, we have the ward in the middle of the river to see him. Otherwise, I think it's pretty expected for him to just do a full clear. I think it's very unlikely he'll ever try to gank a Janna lane or even gank for a Twitch Soraka who doesn't have a lot of CC. So I know from the start that we're going to have a pretty safe laning phase, and I can generally assume that's going to be a 2v2. Now, the lane starts and we're going to start pushing the wave as much as possible. You want to do this in any matchup you can because it's really important to always get level 2 first as the bot lane. Whoever gets level 2 first has a very big advantage in the tempo of the lane and being able to trade and harassing and really being able to do anything and dictate the pace of the lane. So I always want to hit level 2 first. Luckily, Silver took W, which is really nice because that's one of the best spells in the game to push the lane with as an AD carry. And now we're going to start slowly making our way up. Note right there that I only went for that trade because I saw Soraka use her Q and it missed. And so when Soraka's Q is down, that's really the only window I have where I can throw my W off and get a favorable trade. Now that we've hit level 2, I'm walking up, throwing another W, shielding myself, and throwing Ignite on the Soraka to pressure even harder. This does force Soraka to flash, and we got an, a very, very favorable trade right there. Now let's rewind that again and actually show you the steps leading up to getting that really nice trade off. You can see that as the second wave is coming in, I'm already starting to harass and push the wave as much as possible just to keep on applying pressure and to force the Twitch and Soraka to not be able to counter push the wave for their level two first. And you can see that as soon as I hit level two, I'm gonna move forward very aggressively to land a slow necessary for Silver to catch up. And that's how we're able to get a really nice trade on Soraka. Now that we force Soraka's flash, we're in a very good spot now because we know that if we choose to all in, we have the summoner spell advantage. So I'm going to choose to keep pushing the wave with Sever and force them under turret. Now once again, I'm always looking to try to W and when I see Soraka walk up to throw her Q, rather than move backwards and trying to dodge the Q, I'm going to move forward. This is because of two reasons. One. Most Sorakas tend to use their Q a little bit behind to try to predict people from walking back. So if I walk forward instead of walking backwards, there's a pretty reasonable chance that the Soraka Q will miss. Second of all, let's say the Soraka Q does land on me. Even though the Q has already landed on me, I still want to be able to trade because by that point, if Soraka landed the Q on me, I'm going to be in range to use my W. So I might as well just use my W, maybe throw in an auto if I can, and at least try to get a little bit of damage back to at least make it a somewhat even trade. So in general, when you're trading against a Soraka as a short range enchanter like Janna, generally try to walk forward because even if you take their fast, you can still end up getting some damage back in a bad trade. And if you end up dodging the Soraka Q, you can end up getting a really good trade. Right there is another good example of trading in general again. I'm very patient with just walking around, waiting until Soraka to throw her Q and miss. And when she does miss, I can retaliate very easily with a W and an auto attack. I see the Elise is coming on the main map. So now we're going to look to prepare the lane to help get the Elise gank off. We see Elise has a sweeper and she's slowly starting to make her way into the bushes in the middle of the lane. Now, let's take a minute to assess how we want to set up this gank. As Janna, I have a couple tools of CC. I have my Q, which is a pretty slow moving tornado, and my W, which is a guaranteed slow. Now I know that Soraka has flash, and I see that Twitch is a little bit more positioned towards the Elise. So in this case, take a minute to think about what you would do as a Janna in order to get this gank off successfully. It might be more tempting to go for the Twitch because he's closer to the Elise, 
but in reality, I think it's much better to go for the Soraka in this case, just because her flash is down. Elise has a couple options of gap closing. She can morph into a spider form, use her Rapple to get closer to the creep wave, and then transform back into human to land the cocoon after I land my CC. However, if I want to apply my CC onto the Soraka, I need to be the one to flash first and to start off the gank for us, even if it means burning my flash. Therefore, I'm going to choose to jump on the Soraka as soon as I see a good opportunity to start off the gank. You should also note that as this gank is happening, Sivir and I are hovering the leftmost side of the creep wave. This is because we want to try to bait the Twitch and Soraka into inching closer and closer towards the middle of the lane, and perhaps even getting them to move downward towards the Elise. Because if we posture ourselves more towards the left and upward position of the lane, it's much more natural for them to posture completely opposite of us to the right and bottom, which is why we're positioned the way we are. We see that the Soraka is going to be out of position soon, so I'm going to just go ahead and flash W, Q, and Elise follows up immediately at the same time, and we're going to secure a kill on her, which is really good. Now that we've opened up the lane, we're going to really hard shove the lane to try to get us closer to the tower, and hopefully get us a plating of gold. Now as we're pushing towards the tower, there's a couple things you want to keep in mind as a support. First, you want to figure out where their jungler is to see if it's safe to dive the enemy AD carry. In this case, we see the Kha'Zix is mid side because we, LeBlanc sees the Kha'Zix on a ward. Therefore, we're gonna, I'm going to push up really far and continue to harass the Twitch to get him out of the turret range. I do end up forcing the flash on the Twitch, which is a really big win for us. This is something you should always be doing when you're in a 2v1 or even a 3v1 and there's only one enemy champion trying to defend the turret. You should always try to force a dive in order to make them miss a wave. In this case, Twitch missed a lot of that wave and he lost his flash because he got too greedy with staying under turret. And because of that, we're going to get a very nice lead and we're going to start to recall and spend our gold lead. So as you can see, this is a pretty good example of the first back play style that you should have in this matchup. You want to really try to do your best to dodge the cues as much as possible and try to play smart enough to where you can dodge the cues and then retaliate back with Ws and force summoner spells early if they make positioning errors. Now let's go ahead and look at a different game as Janna where instead I'm going to be in a different matchup and because of that I'm going to be playing the laning phase a little bit differently. Now, Janna versus Leona is pretty favored for Janna, but the reason why it's favored is because if I time my tornado very well, the Leona won't ever be able to engage with her E. Therefore, I want to be very aggressive in this matchup because there's a lot of pressure on me to be able to deny the engages on Leona and continuously harass the Leona with my W and auto attacks. I also have Ezreal Vayne as a pretty favorable lane for Ezreal, at least for the first couple levels, because Ezreal's damage output early on is much higher than Vayne's due to his extra poke with his Q. We give a leash to our jungler and we're gonna walk to lane. And the first thing you wanna do when you get to lane is to figure out exactly where the enemy bot lane when and whether or not they gave a leash. In this case, we saw them come from the river, so we know that they gave a leash to Gragas. With that in mind, the state of the lane is pretty even. The lane is pretty much dead center, and so we want to try to push the wave as much as possible to get to level 2 once again. It's especially important in this matchup because Leona's level 2 is much scarier than mine, so I'm going to try and invest auto as much as possible just to get the lane going. Ezreal's also doing a really nice job of throwing out cues, and we're both trying to harass the vein as much as possible, really trying to abuse the fact that our level 1 is way stronger than theirs. Every time the vein is kind of trying to go for any kind of CS, I'm already walking up throwing cues, throwing autos, and really pushing them back. And now that we hit two first, you can see that Ezreal's being even more aggressive and we're really just going to put up the pressure and keep them under turret. Now, note that I took Tornado here at level 2 rather than to stop the Leona engage at any cost. So I want to be able to deny that even more than having a shield for myself. Because if I can deny the Leona from engaging on us, I'll save even more damage in the long run than by just having a shield. Now that they're under turret, this is a really good position for us because now the Ezreal and I can just slowly start chipping away at the turret, and I can also use my Tornado to harass them under turret, which is 
pretty nice if it ever lands on them. However, I don't recommend you do this too often because that is a window of vulnerability that you're leaving yourself open to. But I think it's okay to do so in this case just because we had a really big creep wave and we can continuously do so and force Vayne to uh, be more careful under turret. Here, this is an example of where I wish I had Martino a little sooner. Because if I had Martino a little sooner, I could have cancelled that Leona Venus Blade, but she does a really good job of uh, catching me out. However, I have to use my flash to get out of there. The Vayne also mispositions a little bit, and now uh, Vayne is forced to use her summoner spells and to get out. Now that Vayne is really, really low, I'm really not afraid to stay in this lane and keep pushing the lane forward. I'm just going to use my Tornado to push the lane more aggressively and continue to press our lead because they are forced to recall right now. I see that Leona did not cancel her recall, but I'm just going to stay right here and just keep autoing the turret to get all my spell thief procs before I recall. And now Ezreal and I are going to go back. Note how we were able to establish a really good lead for ourselves on this first back just from knowing that we're stronger level 1 and poising ourselves to continuously harass them as much as possible. As you can see, we were able to amount a huge CS lead just from our first back. Ezreal nearly has double vein CS and we're going to have a much better time in lane now that we have Ezreal's tier while Vayne only has almost nothing. Meanwhile, I'm able to have my Frostfang as well as some extra potions and a pink ward to continuously apply pressure for us. As you can see, now that I'm back to lane, I'm already playing really aggressive. As soon as I see the Leona use her E, I'm going to use my Tornado to cancel it out as much as possible. And as soon as Leona's uh, shield explodes, we're going to start retaliating back with autos. You can see even in that exchange, that was still a pretty good exchange for us overall. Now, another thing to observe right here is how aggressive we are. I want you to look at this wave right here. The reason why we're being so aggressive is because we want to continuously harass them and force them to make a decision on whether to fight us or to lose CS. Because they have to slowly inch their way closer and closer and Ezreal and Janna has more superior poke than Vayne and Leona, they have to make a very hard decision on choosing to fight us or getting the last hit. If they choose to get last hits, we can poke them. If they choose to fight us, we can disengage really easily and they'll almost certainly lose the trade. So we decided to be really aggressive there and sandwich ourselves between the wave and us so that way if they choose to fight us then the wave will slowly push more forward and it'll keep on losing more and more cs and can keep building a really nice freeze the Leeson does show here just to harass even more we don't end up getting a kill there but once again we force them back once again and now the wave is in an awful spot you can see that this wave is getting closer and closer to her turret Ezreal can do a really nice freeze here Meanwhile, I'm free to roam around the map with the Lee Sin and help secure us more vision and more jungle pressure. Now, I do see the bot lane is collapsing in on us. We're going to slowly kite back. You can see that Ezra and I are continuously fighting while the Lee Sin backs off. And Ezra and I are pretty strong, so we are just going to continuously kite them. Gargus does engage on us, but I get a really nice tornado, and we're going to end up turning this entire fight around with Lissandra coming in and getting a really nice 3 for 1. We are able to get this really nice exchange just from the fact that we forced the Vayne and Leona to loop all the way around and make a decision on whether to fight us or to get the CS. And because we chunked them so much before, they weren't able to contribute very much to that fight overall. And this really only came from the fact that we continuously harassed them before throughout the laning phase and applied so much pressure with wave management and using our strengths to the point where we could establish a really strong lead for us for this game. These two games are really good examples of really understanding the champion matchup and knowing how to apply your lead to slowly gain small incremental advantages throughout the laning phase. In the case for this Janna versus Leona game, since I know that we're much stronger level 1 and I know that I can cancel Leona's E at any time. I'm poising myself much more forward in lane because I know I can harass them very safely and I know that Ezreal also has way more pressure than Vayne so we should be able to win this matchup if we play very aggressively and shove them under turret. Meanwhile in the Janna vs Soraka I had to be a little bit more conservative with how I position myself and I had to be a lot more patient with waiting for Soraka to use her spells first before I can retaliate back. Regardless, in both examples, we were able to gain our lead by burning their summoner spells and then getting some help 
from our respective junglers to continuously make our lead even more snowbally and to secure us the lead that'll help us transition into a stronger mid game. I hope you found this video informative and if you enjoyed it, check out all the other content we have on GameLeap.com.